All right, and we are back with BJ and BJ Selection. And, you know, Brad and I were talking on the the break. I understand that the, the steaks, like we were talking about from Omaha Steak, are frozen and evidently flash frozen and, you know, the highest form of frozen you can get. <laughs> Whatever the heck that means. Yet, and, and Brett was talking about, they used to have the guys that go out in the vehicles and their trucks or their vans or whatever, and they would come to your house trying to sell you steaks, okay? Or they would come to your business, and they hit a lot of businesses, and I remember that time period. Mm-hmm. And it's like like Brett said, an ice chest in the back. Yep. Because it would be a freezer, but the freezer wasn't plugged into anything. I mean, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> come on. At some point, these steaks are starting to thaw. Unless suspended animation of freezing meat is totally different than freezing anything else in the entire world. Yeah, it's uh, they use liquid nitrogen. That's that's good. Um, uh, it's a uh, let's see. I'm reading up on the uh, chirogenic temperatures, which uh, is well below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And, but basically what it is, is they dip it in liquid nitrogen. Now, how does that make sense to anybody? Um, that can't be good. Because liquid nitrogen is a mixture of ethanol and dry ice. Which just does not sound good at all. Which, to me, would evaporate into the meat. It says that it, um, it causes the water inside the foods to freeze in a very short period of time without forming large crystals, which thus avoiding damage to the cell membranes, is what this is saying. And this is Wikipedia definition of flash freezing. Well, I'm not all technical and, and that kind of form of brain power, but wouldn't that be a chemical in to the beef? You would think that it would absorb some of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... As compared to the chemicals that the beef are already getting, you know, being raised and vaccinated and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, yeah. you know, let's just add a little bit more stuff in there and then we will freeze it, <laughs> which kind of tells me, and just from what you read there, Brett, that they're freezing the that part of it and then the meat freezes around that, correct? Yeah. Is that what you're getting? Welcome back. And we're live. The bond of unity. I'm Melody. Today we're talking about God hears our cry. And we did want to go to the chat. We have activity. Keep it coming. We enjoy the chat. We like to interact with you all. It can get boring up here with just words. I mean, really. He's long-winded and I just have to listen. Um, From Barry B. 1206, it says... I believe that oppressive social systems come into play because we become complacent and submit to them. We allow ourselves to conform to that way of life or that way of thinking. But the origin of them come from principalities and other powerful influences that are in authority, which convince us that there is no other way or no hope for change. That is so true. That is so true. And that is one part that we didn't acknowledge is that the reason why they have that mentality, because how... What is like, what are the the um, main ways that the devil can enter? Yeah. It's your your mind, your will, and your emotions. Yeah. So with your mind being open to him, yeah. he's in there telling you how you are never going to have anything better, yeah. how you're not worth anything more, exactly. and you believe that. Exactly. And that's what you end up living like as a result of that. Exactly. You want to get the other? Better half. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. I know you see. <laughs> okay. Not sure who it is, but better half. Thank you for tuning in to the show. Says, I believe it is uh, the work of, I believe it is the work of the oppression who opens up the door for for hatred. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. All right, uh, I definitely understand that you're saying the work of the. Are you saying the work of the people who are being oppressed? The work of what's being done to them. Ah, that opens up the door for hatred. For the ah, hatred, I can, right? I can understand. You endure that. it for so long. That but, you. But this is the thing with the people of Israel. Okay. I could see if they actually got mad and was like about to riot or something, like they actually showed some emotion, Yeah, they did everything Pharaoh asked them. Exactly. So it wasn't that they hated him. I mean, they did, 
but they didn't they didn't move on it. Exactly. They exactly. they sat there and did everything exactly. he asked. So right? the thing the so the question now is the the second part of that question was how do we change it? Where do, where do we go from here? So that's a question for you all as well on chat. Where do we go from here? God hears our cries. All right, he has the power to change our situation, but it's it's feeling like we're still stuck in that same situation. So where do we go? How do we change our oppressive situation? How do we change our stars, pretty much? How do we go forward? Monday, May 23rd, 2011, uh, we welcome uh, you to a studio in which we're going to be telling stories. Uh, we're going to be telling stories, uh, individual stories about artists, individual stories about passion, commitment, uh, advocacy um, throughout uh, the balance of the summer. Uh, and uh, into the fall where we will really make a, uh, um, a sharp transition, uh, adding programming that will involve uh, a, 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 a prelude to the caucuses in uh, the beginning of uh, next year and the election of 2012. Des Moines artist John Baldwin is with us in the studio. He uh, is going to discuss his works appearing on screen, in fact, um, and tonight's Chautauqua 50309. Uh, and uh, John is somebody who has a, a little bit of a show right now at Ritual Cafe in Des Moines. Ritual Cafe is on 13th Street downtown in what's called the uh, Gateway West uh, area of uh, Des Moines. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, take a look uh, right now at the first of, I think I counted them, 77 yeah. pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a little carried away there. But, you know. <laughs> and, and the background, the background for the show, uh, we have uh, uh, something that's in the Gateway West uh, that uh, that is the uh, park uh, that uh, can best be described, uh, as I do to my two-year-old granddaughter, as the alphabet person yeah, <laughs> or the alphabet bust. Uh, and she understands very clearly at the age of two in a, a, a hyper-enriched household and family unit. Uh. This is Doc with Doc and Lefty. We have a very special guest with us today, Representative Tom Shaw from, from Iowa's 8th uh, House District. Tom, are you still with us? I am still here, yes. All right. So before the break, I, I want to, do you describe yourself as a gun nut? No, I am not a gun nut. Oh, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big gun nut. I think no, the more I'm the merrier. Nut, but, uh. I do appreciate uh, firearms, and uh, I guess I'm an enthusiast. I don't think I'm nutty about them. I don't okay. think there's anything nutty about uh, wanting to protect ourselves. So. Well, well, then, I, I will tell you that uh, um, I, I'm, I consider myself a gun nut, and I view it as a, uh, I view it as a, uh, you know, a moniker of distinction. <laughs> so if, you're, yeah. if, if you watch this, we put gun nut up under me and you. So okay. if you're offended, I apologize now to you. No, I'm all not right. offended All right, at all. good, because I am a gun nut. My son's a gun nut. I mean, he's <laughs> he's always doing something, you know, picking something up. In fact, his goal is to get a Class C permit so he can, so he can uh, buy a 50 cal machine gun. Wow. So, yeah, I'm like, I don't think you need one here in Urbandale. But no, anyway. You shouldn't, but, you know, if he goes through the process and uh, passes his checks on that, why more power to him. So it's okay to have a permit for a sub for a machine gun, but not okay for like a semi-automatic rifle. Right, and the distinction there is when they were talking about the right to keep and bear arms, they were talking about common weapons uh, and common weapons of the day. So if you go back to Roman times, uh, you know the Romans were required to keep swords in their own homes and to be proficient with them. And so the handgun and, and the semi-automatic rifle would would be the today's equivalent of that. All right. So because the 50 caliber machine gun is not common because it's so difficult to get. Right. But you right. think? But I think if they said, "Geez, you don't need a license for a 50 caliber machine gun," then suddenly there'll be a lot more common, don't you think? I think they would be. Yes. So then, at what point do you do you draw the line? I mean, well, again, that's that's automatic. You don't need automatic weapons for your personal defense and and it'd be awful hard to be carrying a, a 50 caliber machine gun around so. well and, and that's true but, but my son's pretty big he can haul one of those around without a lot of problem <laughs> all right there it is 
All right, welcome to Green Central Station. Uh, as you can see, this poster is for the rally on May 7th, which is next Saturday. So uh, I'm Reverend Ray Green every week on Des Moines Amplified.com and live.normal.org. Every Wednesday, along with my good friends, the Deacon, your patient confidant, St. Michael, the face of a million nonviolent adults arrested, prosecuted, incarcerated every day, and the second half of the Silver Tour special, freshly elected normal <laughs> Iowa president, Lord Moda. Here every week on Des Moines Amplified.com and every Wednesday, Green Central Station replays on TNN, the normal network, at live.normal.org. Bring the cannabis counterculture from Iowa to the world. Bring it, guys. Well, how's everybody doing? This is St. Michael here, and uh, we're here to welcome back in the studio our uh, travelers over here that went on a little pilgrimage over to Colorado. Uh, we have the Deacon and Lord Moto. Welcome back, guys. Hey, thanks. It's, it's well, we're back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys were actually on the show last week. That yeah. Was, that yeah. was pretty hype yeah. for you guys. And, uh, man, watching you guys on the video there at the conference, and I got a little clip there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That you were there at the Ziggy Marley show. That you're standing there in the bottom. Oh, did you get that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I saw where they had the camera set up. Yeah. Yeah. But, they, you we know, they, they, they were occasionally, the camera was set by itself, and occasionally somebody would come by and just, you know, zoom in on somebody or something and then reset the camera static. Right. Yeah. They yeah. had two laptops and some other equipment there. They always tape everything they do. It was a great experience. I, it was, go, first of all, being in Colorado compared to being in Iowa is, like I've said before, it's the difference between the North and the South back in the Civil War days. That's you right. You know, and uh, the, the, the first thing that made us realize we were strangers in a strange land was as we pulled, as the bus pulls into Denver, a billboard, regular size billboard that says Kushcon 2011. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I said, hey, we're in friendly territory. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and funny thing, on the way out, alcohol made its point. Some guy got drunk on the bus and uh, they had to call the cops and stop the bus. And on Des Moines, Amplified.com. And we're continuing the discussion. Does it cost more to stay healthy? And it does cost more to stay healthy if you are going to the grocery store or going to a health food store to rely on them to get you to your healthy now, food. Uh, but there's way, well, because they're, 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 they're going right. to charge you're, a little more. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, you go to Hy-Vee into their organic mm -hmm. food department, it's like, you get sticker shock. Exactly. So, you know, do you want bananas that were not irradiated or do you want nice, crisp, clean bananas that, you know, look like perfect bananas? But there are ways to... Be frugal about it. Yep. I mean, if you're cheap like me, but the but the catch is you also can't be lazy. Yeah, do you know what? Which I'll admit to that that I am a lazy person, and I will be the one that will go to the grocery store and sit here and gripe about how much it is, but go, okay, I'll buy those because I'm lazy. Um, and you that, are an American. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it comes down to look, if you want to eat healthy and you want to uh, eat, put better things into your body, yep. it comes down to, let's see, um, growing a garden in your backyard. Yep. And that even can be as simple anymore as even if you have a apartment that you can put a planter and instead of putting plants in it, actually put Vegetables. vegetables in it so there are ways that you can cut the cost down but then um you might actually have to get your butt off the couch and quit playing video games and watching tv get your hands dirty in the dirt exactly which yeah. and and, I, and i've helped to do but i mean again i'm not the first i mean i'm as lazy as the next guy and but again it's all about moving and and getting out but speaking of of moving we, we talked about a little bit early because you know uh, Spending lots of money per month to go into a different fitness facility and whatnot. What are you saying? Um, well, you say you do. You go, you go to uh, one of the fitness places. Yeah, I go to any time. I, I go yeah. to Alabin. I go to any time fitness. Now, and wouldn't, wouldn't it cost less? To, I, I can understand that in the, the, so the winter, but in the right. summer, wouldn't it? Yeah, but the problem was with that, it's not like, it's, it, it's not like you're a roofer. And you can uh -huh. take the time off and, you know, it's kind of like, you know, working this. It's, it's not like it's a seasonal position. Right. And then you can take the time off and not pay for it when you don't use it. Plus, they got air conditioning. In the well, they do have air conditioning, <laughs> except, for the, except for the one that, I, that I, I, I found that's closer to my house. I go in this morning thinking, well, you know, it's a little warm out. So I'll go inside thinking, yeah, they'll have the air on. It'll feel pretty good. And I'm like sitting there going sweating. And like all the windows are open. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not tell it's a little sticky outside? But you know, hey, exactly. I, it, I guess more sweat, you lose lose more weight. But, but I mean, 